What's going on guys? It's Simo. So today I'm bringing to you a deck profile of the strongest competitive budget deck that you can play going into 2018. If you're a competitive player, but you don't like breaking the bank on all these hand traps like Ash Blossom and all these other ultra expensive cards, then this is going to be the deck for you. You are able to build this entire main and extra deck for right under $100. And if you have the budget to expand and upgrade this deck, that's all the better. But you don't even have to because this deck is strong enough on its own that you're going to be able to do well not only at locals but even regionals as well as YCS level events as well and that deck is Pendulum Magicians. Now do keep in mind that if the ban list comes out and alters this list in any single way then I will provide an updated list but for the most part this is a very good deck that you might want to consider investing in. It's super cheap especially with the fact that you only have to relinquish a couple components for the most expensive parts of the deck, but ultimately the entire main and extra deck can be built for under $100, which is absolutely insane. And if you don't know how to play the deck, I've already made an introduction explaining every card in this deck in depth, as well as a combo tutorial as well, explaining how the cards and showcasing how these cards synergize together. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into it. So starting off with the main deck, we have three copies of Harmony magician this is basically like one of your key cards and key playmakers if you're able to pendulum summon this from the hand you're gonna be good to go you're able to enable so many different plays like double Omega or even an Omega plus a rank four. harmonizing magician if you always see it in your hand you know you're gonna be in really good shape going into that game Three copies of Double Iris, just getting to your Pendulum Graphs is absolutely important, especially Time Pendulum Graph if we can help it. Three copies of Purple Poison Magician. This is just one of our insane playmakers because it offers a ton of disruption, not only during our turn, but during our opponent's turn as well. Three copies of Black Fang. So the reason I like three copies of Black Fang is solely because of the fact that there is the Black Fang OTK, and it's very simple, and basically, the only difference is you do need to run all three Black Fangs to pull it off, but at the same time, it's okay to run three Black Fang because we just basically want to see as many Pendulum Magician cards in our opening hand as possible so that we can make the biggest board we can when we go first. So I definitely think that adding in the third Black Fang, I know some people opt for two, but the third Black Fang to enable the OTK is pretty nice. Next up, we have three copies of Wisdom Eye. Wisdom Eye is just an insane playmaker. Basically, is anything you want it to be in your deck. Also plays around Joel and Lockbird very well since it doesn't add a card to your hand. It places it to the Pendulum Zone. I know it's a very popular card at the moment, but Wisdom Eye can pretty much do whatever you want it to do. It's not once per turn. Like, it's just an absolutely absurd card. And the fact we have it at three still baffles me quite a bit. Now, supplementing this, we have two copies of Oaf Dragon Magician. I really like the two Oaf, not only because it's a low scale and the deck does lack some low scales, but it's very good for recursion. You basically want to end on Oaf Dragon pretty much every turn because you're going to be generating a card back to your hand. It's kind of just the best low scale to end on other than Purple Poison, depending on what you're trying to do. They both offer different uh, different roles, but Oaf Dragon is typically the better ender if you can help it. And then we have one copy of White Wing. So White Wing's nice because it essentially not only is a low scale, which again the deck does lack a little bit, but it enables a double synchro play, meaning you can do something like double Omega if you have the correct hand to do so. And it's nice we only need to play one because essentially it's searchable via Harmonizing Magician. We don't really want to have it in our opening hand if we can help it. We basically just want to search it through that Harmonizing to enable that double synchro play. So one is all you need. You don't really need more than that. Other than the fact that it's basically used as a tuner, you don't need it for anything else. We also have one copy of Astrograph. Um, Astrograph is going to become much more important once Heavy Metal Foes Electromite comes out in Extreme Force in February, but for the time being, I feel like you only need one Astrograph Sorcerer in this deck because although it is an extremely powerful card, it's very reactive in a lot of ways, and I think it's just better to have more combo pieces than cards like Astrograph, whereas once we get Electromite, it's going to change a little bit because we're going to be able to enable, not only enable, but abuse Astrograph Sorcerer much more in comparison than we can now. But if you want to play a couple more, that's totally fine. But this also is a budget version and Astrograph Sorcerer can be a little bit expensive. So I'm just going to stick with the one I personally feel that's all you need. Now, 
To complement this, we have three copies of Joker. Joker is your best starter card that you can possibly have, so obviously we want to run it at three. And pairing that, we have two copies of Perform Pal Pendulum Sorcerer. Basically, what you're going to be searching, uh, if at all possible, because you're going to want to Pendulum Summon it out just to pop cards like your Double Iris and things like that. Basically, an extremely powerful card. You can opt to only play one of this, but I feel that two can be very important. And then last but not least, Max C. Max C is an extremely powerful card, and it's it's actually just right in there at our budget at the lowest rarity version. So do keep that in mind that all the cards I am showcasing are at basically the lowest price that you can get them. You know, you're not going to be playing an Ultimate Rare Max C in a budget variant. I pretty much eat up the entire budget. But that's it for the monster lineup. It is a very heavy monster lineup because it is Pendulum Magician. Moving on, we have three copies of Duelist Alliance. This is basically one of the best enablers that we have in the deck, so we want to max out on that. Three copies of Pot of Desires. Pot of Desires is extremely affordable thanks to the Mega Tank. And this is also a deck that doesn't really care about banishing its resources So you're able to just dig through your deck get more combo pieces and make a bigger play as a result of it Then we have two copies of cosmic cyclone. I like cosmic cyclone for the spot removal It's very effective in that way because it kind of just hits cards that we really don't want to deal with The thousand life point cost is totally negligible and being able to banish the cards very important for cards like trickstar reincarnation uh, Banishing resorts also good because that means they can't banish it with something like sleeper There's just a lot of good application overall that I really like Cosmic Cyclone as a card. Also helps in the mirror match. Then we have uh, two copies of Star Pendulum Graph. Star Pendulum Graph I feel like is very good. We want to run two because if we, since we're running Potted Desires, we want to just make sure we still have one to search if we can. It's just a very good card and now he protects our, our monsters from spell effects, but at the same time, the fact that you get that mandatory search is huge and incremental, especially over the course of multiple turns. Only going with two copies of Wavering Eyes, simply because three is too many if you're not playing the mirror match, but you want to have a couple copies if you are, and since it is a very strong deck going into this current meta, this is a card that you still want to play. It's still a combo enabler and things like that, but you want to have this card in the mirror match for sure. You can side the third copy if you wish, but I definitely think two Wavering Eyes in the main deck is definitely the way to go. Rounding out the spells, we have one copy of Pendulum Call. Pendulum Call, it, it's a little bit iffy because it can lose to Ash, but if they use Ash on, say, something like your Pot of Desires or another one of your other spells that there's a lot of easy cards to Ash in this deck, if you can resolve Pendulum Call, then you're going to be in an extremely good position moving forward in the rest of the game. Rounding out everything else, two copies of Time Pendulum Graph. We want to run two, again, not only because we run Pot of Desires, but just because it's an extremely powerful card. This is one of the reasons why this deck is as good as it is, and you're going to want to see this card basically as much as you can. It's searchable with Double Iris, searchable by so many different means, and it's one of the deck's key power cards that you want to basically end on every single turn if possible. So that's it for the main deck. It's a nice sweet 40 cards, nice and easy. We're going to quickly just go over the extra deck just so you guys know what you're working with here. Uh, so two copies of Time Star. Two Time Star doesn't come up too often, but I feel that when it does, it's very important because it's a good playmaker to help get you back into the game. The fact it can search stuff like Joker is just nuts, and it's a really strong card overall, and we have the room, so I think it's definitely worth considering. One copy of Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller is just strong against any graveyard reliant decks there are still a few of those running around and dweller can definitely be very clutch in those situations uh one copy of castell castell is just good overall spot removal just because of the way it's able to deal with certain threats on the board you won't go into it too often but it's definitely nice to have if you need it uh one baguska this is basically what you're going to end every single turn going into if possible especially if you're going first because then you can just stun your opponent and then just pendulum summon and kill them next turn so you definitely want to have a baguska in there uh one trapeze magician not only does this basically hedge uh everything against trickstar because they basically just can't win if you have this card on the field but it's very good for enabling otks as well uh one supreme king dark rebellion very similarly to trapeze these cards do facilitate different uh different ways of accomplishing the same thing but dark rebellion can also just flat out win games on its own in the right circumstance one copy of tornado dragon we actually can afford to play tornado dragon in this budget deck because the rest of the deck 
is so inexpensive, we're able to afford cards like this. And you definitely want Tornado Dragon because Tornado Dragon is arguably one of the best rank fours that we have in this game. So definitely spend the money and get yourself a Tornado Dragon. In that same light, we're also playing two copies of Psy Frame Lord Omega. I can't find my second Omega, so that's just a proxy. But we can also afford to play two copies of Omega in this deck as well, if you can believe that. And that's what I absolutely love about this deck as a budget option. You don't really have to relinquish many things. Obviously, we can't play cards like Beals or Ash Blossom in this deck, and if you're looking to upgrade, those are some good options. But the fact that we don't have to relinquish key components, like Double Omega is one of the things that makes this deck so strong, and you're able to afford two Omegas by playing this budget variant. Next, we have one copy of Ignister. Just very good generic spot removal. You're definitely going to want to use that. Uh, one copy of Enlightenment Paladin. Enlightenment Paladin's a nice option. It allows you to get spells back from the graveyard, and depending on the matchup, that can also be really, really good. It lets you get Wavering Eyes back in the mirror match. Just think about that. Next, we have one copy of Supreme King Dragon Clearwing. Basically, just a Regeki, and that's what you want if you're trying to OTK your opponent. Uh, we have the Dragon Starving Venom as well. This is situational, but there are instances where this card can come in absolute clutch, and you're going to want to have it for those instances. And last but not least, our only link monster is Deco Talker. You don't really link too much in this deck because the way the deck works, you're pretty much going to OTK just through the Pendulum Summoning mechanic itself, but sometimes you might need those extra monster zones opened, and that's what Deco Talker is there for. It's also going to get the extra attack boost to basically give you all the tools that you need to kill your opponent. So guys, that's it for the strongest budget deck of 2018. Let me know down in the comments what you guys think about this budget build. I really just love that you can just play this deck and it only costs just barely under $100 US. I think that's absolutely phenomenal. And if any of you guys are looking to get back into competitive play, I hope you guys build this deck and give it a good test run. So guys, thank you so much for watching the video. Be sure to like the video as always. Subscribe to the channel for more amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. And if you found this video informative, consider backing me on Patreon because just by pledging only $1 a month, you're investing in my ability to continue bringing you amazing Yu-Gi-Oh! content. So thanks so much again, and we'll see you next time.